Good morning. Uh, I'm Aoi Shimaru from Japan Foundation New Delhi. Uh, I'm director of Art and Culture Exchange. And uh, this is Japan Northeast Japan Caravan. Uh, this event is promoting Japanese culture and uh, language in Northeast region. And this is the third city we have toured uh, in uh, Imphal and Gwati. And this is the final city, uh, Dimapu. And we uh, place in CH College. So yeah, uh, I hope many like the people in Nagaland enjoy this event and know more about the Japanese culture and language. Our government and the Indian government also are uh, very keen to promote the culture and language in this region because there is a very um, good uh, potential to know, the, know Japan more. And uh, actually, there is a historical um, like bond between Japan and India, and especially in this region. So Japan Foundation want to support this idea and want to promote the culture and and language here, so that's why we plan this event. in the school, elementary school and the junior high school and uh, it's actually hard even for Japanese uh, we have like uh, several techniques uh, for this calligraphy like uh, we cannot uh, write uh, like we, we use ink but we don't uh, we cannot um, absorb twice in the writing uh, we should start uh, once we absorb then we should uh, write a letter like one through so i think this is the uh, hardest point for the calligraphy and uh, but uh, i think they are doing very nicely so so uh, this is the uh, Yukata experience session uh, and the Yukata is Japanese traditional uh, cloth and uh, cloth, I mean the yeah, traditional clothes and uh, yeah, they are trying to wear and then take a picture in front of the nice background and uh, there are male Yukata and the uh, female Yukata Volunteers also help wearing this uh, And this is the most popular session in this event. We have that in Wauti and Nipa. So many people are excited about this Yukata experience. And they are very, very much enjoying the taking picture with this Japanese uh, traditional costume. So this group is uh, for the voice acting challenge. Uh, what we are doing is uh, actually so we want to promote the Japanese language, but uh, we don't want to you know like uh, the people to study or learn. But uh, I, mean, I mean we want the people to learn in the fun way. So that's why we decided to do the voice acting challenge. So they try to read the script of the animation film and uh, they try to be a voice actor for this animation so that like people will understand some words of Japanese as well as like they uh, like you know like enjoy being the uh, uh, voice actor in this uh, animation so yeah it's learning session but it's it's also fun session I think uh, many Indian people are not familiar with Japanese so uh, through this session, they learn some uh, Japanese words 
and uh, they also will be interested in, in learning Japanese through this session. This is just a kind of gateway for the learning uh, Japanese. Uh, maybe uh, people who uh, never learned Japanese before uh, have some idea what is Japanese language. So that's why like we chose such event and I hope yeah, they enjoy it. And they will be interested in language Japanese and start maybe learning Japanese. So in this auditorium, uh, we are streaming the Japanese films, uh, basically Japanese animated films, and uh, we will showcase uh, four films in two days, and uh, all films are directed uh, by the one uh, very not, uh, very famous Japanese animator director Makoto Shinkai, and. Uh, yeah, because uh, Northeast people are very much fond of uh, Japanese animation, so that's why we chose this selection. And yeah, uh, we're gonna we gonna screen two films today and two films tomorrow. So we are screening the four uh, animation Japanese animation films, and uh, this theme is about the romance of the young. So that's why I think that this, these films are very popular for the people in Northeast. So uh, actually, uh, many Indian people, uh, especially the people from Northeast, are uh, very much fond of uh, Japanese animation, anime. And uh, the anime is the uh, like, uh, biggest gateway for learning Japanese also. So like people watch animation, then we, people started learning Japanese. And uh, I, we are very surprised at the response from the people, audience. And uh, yeah, they actually they know about anime very much, I, I think more than Japanese even. And uh, yeah, they are enjoying the animation. So uh, Japan Foundation is the governmental organization to promote Japanese culture and Japanese language. And uh, we have uh, 25 overseas offices in the world. And uh, in India, we have only one office in the New Delhi. Uh, we, we call Japan Foundation New Delhi and uh, in this premise uh, we have library also so if you come to Delhi uh, please visit uh, the library and you can know more about Japan and uh, you can also borrow the books of Japanese and, uh, and about Japan and uh, we have a good website so uh, if you want to contact us you can just visit the website and uh, yeah you can know how to contact and uh, we have uh, Instagram and Facebook and Twitter also so uh, please follow us and then uh, please uh, interact with us more Hello, my name is Alok SCC Assistant Finance Security Officer CS College Forum Members um, My experience today here is quite amazing and inspirable well, because many things, uh, many new things have been organized like uh, voice acting, the writing skills, the dressing up and it's quite enjoyable to spend this event. We're from Papa Academy and we just came to this college to learn about the Japanese culture and we just, uh, we just came here so we're yet to discover it. Yeah, thank you uh, for this uh, opportunity to make known the programs that we have. Presently, today, ongoing program of the Japan uh, Caravan 2023. Now, how this thing came about is that um, this is sponsored by the uh, Japan Foundation New Delhi. And the uh, Japan Foundation New Delhi, G JFND, is a... Um, organization or an agency of the uh, Japanese government and on behalf of the Japanese government they take out uh, activities promoting Japanese language, culture and uh, connecting people to people uh, for better understanding of the world and also for possible um, socio-economic uh, connectivity that's in general their objective. Now how we came to uh, do this stage, 
to this program is that uh, we thought that our you know young people, our students, and the situation in Nagaland was at a very uh, standstill kind of uh, position where things were stagnant, where the youth has doesn't have much of a hope in one way, trying to find up employment opportunities, work opportunities, livelihood, but in many ways uh, finding it to be a, a very difficult task to do. So we thought we should be able to offer them opportunities. Uh, that's one. And secondly, uh, we running a college without uh, you know, just a classroom education alone is not sufficient, so we should go outside the box. With that perspective, um, English has given us certain advantages. So similarly, the leading economies of the world like China, Japan, Korea, if we know their languages, um, we will get additional advantage and age in the field of employment. So without, um, we should learn their language. So not necessarily to go and work there, but we could have opportunities coming. So. Um, we thought we'll give an opportunity for Japanese language learning here in this college. So we contacted the Japanese embassy in Delhi. They referred us to GFND. We contacted them, spoke with them, and I think the timing was uh, just right. God's providence, I would say. And you are also looking you know, for people to partner with. And then uh, we quickly came to an understanding and then uh, we started the Japanese language, language course in uh, 2020, the first batch. And it's been going on uh, every year, the one batch after the other. And because of that relationship we've, we've had uh, for the last several years, um, and Japan Foundation was looking to uh, expand their activities in the Northeast, bring the awareness of Japanese language and culture in a broader sense. Um, we decided to have this program here in this uh, college, which will give an exposure to their school students, as well as you know, other working professionals. Everyone is open and free to come and join uh, us here. So that's how the journey started. And uh, today, that's how here we are in this, uh, the first uh, Japanese um, festival, I would say, uh, which will help us, the Naga people and the Japanese to come closer to each other. And we feel that this will be a bridge which will help our youth. And, and that brings us to another um, issue or another perspective where some people may think or may want to know other than the few point, why Japanese language? Why Japanese culture? Instead of our own Naka language, Naka culture, are we not rich enough in that? So that question is there. And what I'd like to say is, uh, it's not one at the cost of the other. So with that perspective, uh, CH College has been the first or rather one of the first uh, institutions of a higher education to start the to start observing and um, conducting programs on the mother tongue language program we were one of the first and we have started this more than five years back so our emphasis is multilingual we must be rooted in our own mother tongue languages but since we as a people are too small, population-wise, geographical-wise, our language alone will not be sufficient to take us forward in the you know, world competitiveness. So we should be learning the language of international trade and commerce. So when it comes to international trade and commerce, English we already have. And with that, we can manage in much of the world, Europe, India, or North America, we can manage with that. But the next level of competitiveness would be to learn the language of major economies like Japan. So it is a pure or largely economic factor which has you know, driven this force. And I think there's a very valid reason 
and our own language for our own identity. I think that is also equally important. But these are not a zero sum game. I'm not saying we forgo our own language and culture and learn a foreign one, no. But we should uh, add more you know, other languages which we can use economically for our economic benefit uh, with our own as the, uh, the core, the foundation should be our own and on top of that, add the other layers. Here, this is my personal uh, passion, I would say, or personal uh, conviction. Unemployment issue is one, but we are not looking at sending all our unemployed youth somewhere. That's part of the package, that can happen, that's good, that's beneficial, but that's not the final objective. Now, the, 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 the final scenario that I would like to reach is that, just like after World War I, Nagas went to Europe as labor corps, 2,000 of them, and that created the political consciousness. And they came back and made political changes, reawakening among the Nata people, which continues till today. Unfortunately, on the wayside, we have not learned or we lost track about our economic development, about our economic self-sustenance. So teaching and talking alone is not going to help much. It has to be experienced and learned on the floor, on the job. So through this program, we want to equip our students, our youth, and a few hundred, if not few thousands of them can go to Japan over the next few years, work there for three years, five years, get exposed to the technology, get exposed to the work culture, get exposed to how the real world operates, come back and bring about an economic renaissance and changes in Nagaland. That is our ultimate objective.